right, welcome to uh, Amateur Radio Roundtable. I'm Tom, W5KUB. And this uh, show is all about ham radio. We discuss various different topics about uh, ham radio. And if you're out there listening tonight on uh, WBCQ, on International Shortwave, we uh, would like to invite you to send us an email to tom at w5kub.com, tom at w5kub. Dot com, and uh, we'd like to hear from you, where you're located, and give us a signal report. We're on 7490 right now, relatively low power, 50,000 watts, but uh, people are hearing it. I've uh, listened to it occasionally with uh, remote SDR receivers, and I've heard it in Iceland and South America and places like that. So uh, we do have an audience out there. Send us an email. Hey, also... Uh, we want to uh, we want to ask another favor. Please hit the subscribe button. It's going to be let's see. It's going to be right down, right down there somewhere. I got an arrow pointing at it. All you do is hit that subscribe button, and that will subscribe you to the show. And uh, we really, really need that. That helps us a whole lot to uh, uh, to get a higher ranking within YouTube, and uh, it uh, it helps other people find our show. So please do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Please do that. And then let's see. One other thing. Join our Facebook group. Uh, we've got a, a neat, great uh, ham radio Facebook group. We've got over 12,000 ham radio operators and shortwave listeners in our group. The group is for uh, the show. Basically, it's, it's about ham radio. You can find it on uh, YouTube under Amateur Radio Roundtable or it's just simple. Just search for W5KUB, and you will find it uh, yeah, there on Facebook. And please, uh, please join it there. Some people may not know it, but in addition to uh, in addition to our shortwave and our, our video podcast, we also have a uh, audio podcast that's carried just about, I think, by every podcast carrier uh, in the country. And uh, people are uh, new podcast carriers are carrying us and finding us every uh, every month. Uh, uh, we get added to some new uh, podcast carriers. So uh, listen on that if you want to. Uh, and we've got a link on our website to our audio podcast. And uh, love to uh, love to ha have your comments about that. Uh, hey, let me make an announcement here real quick. Mar uh, uh, Mark Garrett is turned back in two tickets to Hamcation. Uh, Mark is not going to be able to go due to some last-minute uh, problems. So we're giving away two tickets to Hamcation tonight on the show. Uh, this was posted on our Facebook page. If you're interested, send your name and call to, to uh, Tom at w5kub.com tom at w5kub.com that's for two tickets and we're going to give those away about mid-show tonight uh we're going to run hambot and uh, hambot is going to pick somebody that will use them we're not going to pick we're not going to pick randomly uh out of the list or we would go all night so we're we're going to limit this to just the people that are going to use the tickets and go down here so send an email to tom at W5KUB.com if you're interested in the two uh, uh, Orlando Hamcation tickets and they will be mailed out tomorrow morning to you. All right. Well, let's uh let's go out to our remotes and see who's out there. Oh boy, I see Glenn. Glenn, how you doing? Oh, hanging in there, man. Uh kind of funny as soon as you played the theme she had to come running in. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no. Well, maybe uh, she's a dedicated follower of the show. I don't know. There you go. Uh, that's that's yeah. good, man. Well, what it is is they both missed me this weekend. I was up in the uh, St. Louis area at the Collinsville uh, Winterfest, and so they had to do without me for a whole yeah. day. And uh, that means they had to eat, you know, dry food instead of canned. Well, that's no fun. And, uh, they have just been full of vinegar ever since, as you can tell. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they get their own toys. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, 
We had a lot of fun up at the Ham Fest, though. It was it was good. Well, that's uh, right. You went up to, to see, the, the one up near St. Louis, right? Right. And I uh, got to see Bob Heil and Ward Silver and uh, Joe Eisenberg was there. Okay. Cool. So, a lot well, of fun. Well, we, we may have time to talk about that tonight. We've got several things uh, already kind of lined up in the show, but uh, uh, we may squeeze that in. If not, we will make that a priority next week. And I've got the little video clips that you sent me and everything, and we've kind of uh, attached them together. So we've got some talking video for you, and you, you can talk about it. It looked like a pretty nice ham fest. Yeah, it was fun. I got a lot of good little odds and ends. All right. Well, very good there. Um well, uh, Alan ha is having to work late. I think he had a meeting. He thought he could make it in time, but uh, obviously he he has not. And uh, but uh, maybe he'll join us here in a little while. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a segment with uh, Raisa tonight, and she's going to show us how to how she puts up an antenna out in the forest all by herself with a big shot. So that's coming up. Uh, a li little later, let's see, I had a picture uh, of that. Let's see, where is it? Well, I may not find it there. Oop, oop. I don't want to run that. Don't want to run that. Yeah, I do. That's what I wanted right there. There she is right there with the big shot and uh, and uh, and holding the ham cation there in her right hand. Look at that. All right, well, let's, uh, let's just move on here and um, let's jump down. Uh, let's just go down to Orlando. And see uh, see what's going on down in uh, Orlando. Uh, Michael Colley, W4ORL, chairman of the or of the uh, Hamcation. Ham? Is it called Hamfest? Hey, Michael. Hey, I'm here. Come on in here. All right. All right. Well, hey, man. Uh, well, there it is in the background. Hamcation looks 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 like you guys are getting ready. Uh, we are. Uh, it's been busy for us, uh, especially this week with uh, last-minute sales coming in. Uh, so we've been really busy. Well, you know, <clears throat> there's a question with some of these other <clears throat> ham fests around. You know, kind of people are worried that they might cancel or something toward the last minute. But you guys are in there, right? You're not there. There's no way you guys are going to cancel. Yeah, we're not canceling at this point. Uh, we're way too close for that yeah um so the show will happen um currently we've had one or two vendors uh back out uh but nobody major really um that affected us and most of those people was supply issues uh one they didn't have supplies to sell yeah um and two a couple of them just couldn't uh have the manpower the mana booth and their uh storefront at the same time yeah yeah I can uh, I can see it happening, and I know some other companies that ha have that same problem. They they can't get parts, and they they don't have enough people, you know, to uh, to to work here. Well, hey, man, you know, I, I wish I was coming down here, but unfortunately, we're just not going to make it uh, this year. Next year, we'll uh, probably come down. Uh, hey, how's the weather looking? Is it, you think the weather's going to be good? Um, it, it should be. Uh, currently, we are uh, for us, we're a little cold. Uh, we're currently at 51 degrees. That's not bad. That's not no, bad. That's not no, like uh, that's not like 27 with the wind blowing 30 miles an hour. <laughs> it was 17 degrees in Collinsville. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we posted to warm up a little bit, then have another cold front. Uh, but usually during uh, Hamcation, we average 70s uh, during the day. Yeah. All right. All right. Well. You've uh, you, we we showed a lot of pictures last week. I don't have the pictures loaded here. Uh, I can pull your slide up on the the uh, internet here and show it. Um, I guess there's really not many changes since we talked last time. Uh, um, the the biggest change currently um, has been uh, a lot of vendors finally we were able to get uh, a lot of prizes in. So if you go to our website mcation.com and go to the prize list. Uh, there's currently around 80 prizes listed right now. Um, I can tell you that uh, Sunday's grand prize will be an ICOM 7610. Yeah, and nice Friday's idea. grand prize will be a ICOM 705. 
Um, and we're still working on a Saturday grand prize yet, just due to supply issues of some of the radios we wanted to get. Uh-huh. Uh, but we will have something up probably this week for uh, Saturday. And there's a lot more prizes to go up. Uh, we're just verifying a few things. So I'm looking at probably over 100 prizes to give out over the three days. Oh, man, that is, that's just amazing. And uh, so, and of course, there's yeah. other radios on there. There's an ICOM 70, or, uh, 7300. I believe there's an ICOM 5100 on there right now. So there's other uh, very nice uh, prizes right now on there. That's, uh, those are some great prizes. Uh, and yeah, now you just have to pick my name as one of them. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's your website, hamcation.com. And uh, all the information you want, man, if you want to know about the vendors or anything, just click on it. Tickets, it may be a little late to or Well, see, I guess they can still order tickets online, right? Uh, they can. Uh, right now, everything is being held in will call. Oh, uh, we're okay. not selling anything out, just how close it is. Uh, but you can order tickets up until February 6th. Okay, th- and that's because you will hold them at the gate there, and uh, they can pick them up there. That's good. Correct. And uh, we'll actually have our will call open on Thursday for anybody that comes into town early uh, from starting at 9 o'clock. Uh, in the morning on Thursday, so they can actually come to the uh, will call booth and actually get their tickets uh, on Thursday if they like. All right. Well, you got a lot of stuff on your website here. Your website, uh, your webmaster's done a great job again. Well, let's let's just look at a couple of these attending attending uh, the Hamcation. How to park, dates, hotels. You need any information about a hotel? Yeah. You can find um, it right here. Of course, we'll have a talk-in station for anybody that's coming in by vehicle that needs directions, anything like that. Um, so, and then if you're still looking for a hotel, there's information on here. Also, Scoot Around uh, is our scooter renter company. So, if you need a scooter to get around, you can go on there and uh, rent a scooter. Uh, there's still plenty of hotels and hotel spaces available. Um so can you rent a scooter after you get there, or is it something they have to bring out special? No, no, you can actually rent them on site if you like. Okay. Um, it's easier to do it beforehand because they do know what you want, and they have it ready for you. Yeah. So you just pretty much come up, show them your ID. It's already paid for. You just pick it up and go. Uh, but if you're not sure if you're coming and it's a last-minute decision or a last-minute that you want to rent one, you can rent them on site. Well, that's great. Uh, be a lot of scooters out there, maybe, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah there's, they bring a whole semi pool. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're we're all getting older, and uh, so some of us need uh, need a little help. Uh, I, I can still get around, but uh, I got some bad knees. But, you know, you know, I'll tell you what, I've got a radar gun here, and I'm thinking if I come next year, could you guys organize an event with the scooters and we would have a scooter race because yeah, i've got a big area out there you got a big area that we could get out yeah, there you uh, get them out there on that road and i, I, oh, I can take this radar gun and we can clock them okay yeah, take it one step better and make it radio controlled scooters well if somebody wants to enter one uh we can do that too all right well uh okay michael well, what else you you know we're getting close. What else you want to tell us here? Anything on the um, website here that we, we should focus in on? Um, the other thing is uh, the ARL National Convention is happening on Thursday. I do know oh, if yeah. you go to ARL.org um, slash expo, um, yeah. there's information up there to how to do the uh, training tracks on Thursday. Um, so uh, if you're interested in the four training tracks, I know uh, all four of them are huge this year. One of them is going to be Contest University. Um, it's going to be there for the first time. Um, there is going to be a um, technology training track of some of the technologies used in Hamcation. There's also going to be um, ARL Handbook. Uh, going to have one on that. And the other one's going to be an MCOM training track. And I do know the new uh, emergency manager for ARL will be there also hey, uh, hey, doing hey, that one. The ARL's bringing a lot of people, aren't they? Correct, because it is a national convention. So they'll probably have, um, 
we're figuring between 50 and 70 uh, people from ARL from around the country that will be there. Man, that is a lot of people. Wow. So your CEO, your uh, president will be there. A lot of the office staff will be there. Uh, they'll have the full bookstore, the ARL store there, a lot of stuff. Um, so they have a lot of stuff planned uh, for the three days of hamcation on site. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, well, Michael, hey, thanks for joining us tonight. You're welcome to stick around with us the rest of the night. Uh, I, don't know right. if there's, I don't know if there's any questions. I've been trying to read the chat room. I'm not sure if there's any questions for you, but they can find yeah. all the answers on the website. Uh, everything's there, and uh, if anybody has questions, uh, they can uh, shoot an email. My contact information is on the website also. Uh, and the biggest thing is... Uh, Go to the website, go to the very bottom of the front page, and subscribe for our newsletter. Uh, that's where we're going to send out any updates. Uh, here probably next week we'll send out a final update before the show of anything uh, current. We'll send out the um, – also once the program gets done uh, that we actually give out at the show, we'll also email it out to everybody so everybody will have a program also in the email. Uh, so that's another way to stay in touch with uh, what we're doing. All right, and you also have the app, right? The people that are winning prizes can find the prize on the app, right? Uh, this year, we will not have the app. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, the app was a uh, something that happened with COVID, and the company is not able to support it oh, this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I got uh, you. So, but we will have uh, TV set up in all the uh, rooms. Uh, also, if you go to the prize page, actually on our website, at the top under Attending Hamcation, uh, there's a spot that says prizes. This yep. year, we will actually be uh, entering the prizes live after each drawing to the website. And our website is mobile friendly. Um, so all the prizes are currently listed there. And the prizes are actually listed by the hours that we're going to give them away currently. Um, oh, that's good. So in the last spot in the column says winner. And once we uh, draw the winner, they will be posted there. And it will go across all of our uh, Facebook and Twitter feeds also, and that's at Hamcation, so you can follow us there also. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, with social, social media now, you, you're able to get that information out. Yeah, so you, you'll do okay without the app this year. Yeah, I think yeah. we'll do fine with it. And just like I said, the website is mobile-friendly, so it pulls up off phone very well. And um, there'll be uh, plenty of ways to find out if you won. Yeah, hey, one of my favorite places was outside under the tent last time. Yeah, yeah uh, we'll have plenty of food on hand, uh, tent set up. ICOM is actually sponsoring a whole bunch of uh, ICOM umbrellas with uh, picnic tables this year to sit out outside also. Uh, so we should have plenty of seating uh, areas for people. All right, well, that's great. Well, hey, Michael, uh, again, uh, we're talking with Michael Colley, W4ORL. The chairman of the Hamcation. Did I get that right? Chairman, right? You did. Yes, I'm okay. the chairman. Very good. Uh, thanks so much for coming on here, Michael, with us tonight. And, uh, hey, we, we know it's going to be a great ham fest, man. All right. Thank you for having me, and uh, I'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to all that good food and stuff down there. Yeah, well, uh, I'd say send me some back, but it probably wouldn't be that good after no, no. you got it here. Yeah. Bring me back. some back. I'll just have to make I'll bring do, you back some crumbs. That'd here. be about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so a couple things I want to touch on tonight. Uh, uh, coming up next, uh, Raisha, uh, Raisa. Let me. I, I have trouble pronouncing her name. She's Russian. R one B I G Raisa. And she's in St. Petersburg, Russia. And uh, she's going to show us tonight how to use the big stick. Here's a, here's a shot of her with the, with the big shot. It's called Big Shot. I've seen these here in the U.S. It's just a, a very large uh, slingshot. I mean, you, I think you pull that, that slingshot back about three or four feet there. Yeah? It, can, it can do some pretty serious launching here. So she's going she gonna to show us uh, her putting up an antenna tonight. And then, and then after that, uh, uh, we've got a couple of things. Uh, I'll just, I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention everybody. We, we've got a flight coming up here uh, uh, real soon. 
with uh, it's flight 106. We'll talk a little more about it later. But Huey Did Dewey and Louie. She used Louis, that big stick to uh, get that balloon, her balloon out of the yeah, tree? Yeah, she used it, yeah. Well, Huey Dewey and Louie are, are itching for this next flight. We think it's going to be a good one. We've had so many failures. You know, we've had a couple successful times around the Earth, but many, many failures. And, uh, hey, it's a dangerous, nasty place up there when you get up at that altitude. And uh, they're itching. They're ready to go. Uh, we think we're gonna. We think we're gonna make a uh, make it this time. And uh, that's the official patch right there for 106. I'm looking at the winds up there right now. Did you know we've got great jet stream winds right now from Memphis all the way out to Europe at 130 to 150 miles per hour. Man, it is. It, it, it's moving up there. All right, so let's do this. Let's uh, let's go. Uh, let's see what Raisa has to say about the big stick. I think you guys will uh, enjoy this. So stand by, and uh, uh, let's see if we can't. Let's see if we can't get there. Uh, let's see. All I have to do is find it. And it might take me a second. Okay. Well, I tell you what, guys. Uh, Glenn, go ahead. Glenn, give us, uh, give us, uh, give us something while I look for the uh, video file. I've got so many videos open here. I'm having trouble finding it. Uh oh, you've lost it. Uh, yep. Well, uh, also down in Orlando, uh, of course, I'll be doing an Arduino forum. And uh, Joe Eisenberg will that be down there doing his kit building for him, uh, along with some other folks. But also, I've um, been talking with ARRL, and they're going to have a lot of their folks, uh, their uh, YouTubers and writers and, and everybody uh, there uh, in their area to uh, meet and greet everybody. Uh, they're bringing their whole bookstore, so I'm going to be down there signing and trying to get you to buy my book. All right. And uh, I, I just can't wait to get down there. The only problem is I'm flying, so I'm kind of limited on what I can buy and take home with me. Yeah. And, you know, even if I got an extra suitcase, you know, the added weight fee would probably kill me. So I can't buy well, any true. boat anchors. That's true. You know, well, so you, gotta, you, you know, you have to do like Joe Eisenberg does. He, he always goes and buys him an extra suitcase when he gets there. I actually am thinking and planning and, and yeah. whatnot. If I'm not mistaken, they they have uh, it may just be Dayton, but I think they have a UPS or the postal service there that can ship from on yeah. site. Yeah, yeah, they probably do. Uh, hey, get you one of these bags that's kind of a canvas type. You know, well, it'll, I, fold, I it'll, it'll a, fold up flat. It'll, yeah, it'll carry, fold up. It'll fit in a suitcase. And I carry right. one of those. All right. Well, hey, Raisa is ready. So let's just go out to uh, let's just go out to uh, Russia. And let's see how a Russian YL puts up an antenna. Here we go. Hello, my friends. This is Raisa, R1BIG. And I have a question. Can a young lady install a portable ham radio position alone? And I am in this wonderful place. What I need for my portable working? Big shot. Because I have no here masts, and uh, I will choose one tree uh, and use it like a mast. Of course, I need a battery, and I have uh, my transceiver, my portable transceiver, and the uh, device for checking uh, SWR. It is very important, but I need it later. Of course, the antenna. I will use uh, Monobon uh, uh, dipole antenna. Uh, it is 20 meters band antenna. Uh, cable. And, of course, it is very necessary to be safety. Let's start. I will use two cameras uh, because I have not um, GoPro camera. Will be so. <laughs> oh my 
Ой. Now I will try to get it up on the tree. I need this one. What I have now it's good. My dipole is not high. I don't know how high is it, but I will try. I have to tune. Very good. SWR only one. I'm very happy! Now the antenna is ready and uh, SWR is uh, 1.0 I'm very happy and now I will install my table and uh, all other equipment Radio 1, Bravo, India Golf, Stroke Portable. Romeo 1, uh, Bravo, India Golf, Slash Portable. Good afternoon, your 57. My name is Tudor, Tango Uniform Delta Oscar Romeo, and I'm 13 years old. Uh, Todor, welcome to our wonderful ham radio world and I'm really very happy that you are a young person and you are in our... Okay guys, I, uh, I totally messed that up. That was just the, that was just part of the video. 
uh, I had the uh, we had our little discussion interview before and after, and uh, before and after, and we uh, we didn't get to see it there. So I'll try to get that out a little later, and uh, we'll uh, maybe next week we'll uh, we'll play our discussion. She answers a lot of questions that people have asked before, so uh, we'll uh, we'll play that next week, and we won't have any video in between there. So anyway, okay. So, um, all right. So, remember, guys, we are in the process of giving away some uh, uh, Hamcation tickets. If you're interested in Hamcation tickets, you got to send an email right this minute to tom at w5kub.com. Tom at w5kub.com. You got about three minutes to get your uh, entry in. And we're gonna we're gonna pick a name here in about three minutes, so uh, that's coming up. And uh, Glenn, uh, take over for a second. I'm gonna go check with uh, Hambot here and see if uh, we've got all the uh, all the entries in. I'll be right back, man. All right. Well, I was gonna say I've been uh, Joe Eisenberg and I hung out together after the Ham Fest on Saturday because he was driving home Sunday and so was I and uh, we went over to this micro center which is pretty much what it name says and it's one of the micro centers of old there's like 25 of those left in the country and they had everything from 3d printers I mean they literally had a floor display of the Ender 3 3d printers there are probably about 40 of them right there and it was all I could do to Keep from buying one. Uh, I have my eyes on a different one, but man, it's so hard not to just grab a box and go. But one of the things I did grab was a Raspberry Pi Pico or two. And this is what it looks like. And these are, uh, these don't use the Arduino C++. They are powered by Python which is one of the new popular uh, computer languages for the, the microcontrollers. And uh, it's, it's kind of like the basic of old. It's much easier to, to understand and, and read and work with. And uh, so it's becoming very popular uh, to work with. And so I figured I'd, while I was there, I'd pick one up. And the price is right. That one cost me a whopping $3. So I got a couple of those and some other stuff while I was there and uh, so it was it was a fun trip all the way around we're back okay I'll just check my hand here okay you got about uh, about one more minute guys to get your uh, thing in we'll be back in one minute and handbot is going to tell us who the winner is so yeah uh, get your entry in we'll be back in a minute didn't get everything on your holiday list now is the time to spice up your ham shack with ICOM's new IT52A handheld. This radio is perfect for staying in or venturing out. The IT52A is now shipping. ICOM's newest handheld amateur radio is a VHF UHF dual bander with D-Star and FM dual mode functions. This radio supports conventional FM communications and D-Star simplex and worldwide calls over the D-Star internet gateway. The ID52A is the first handheld amateur radio with a full color 2.3 inch waterfall display and the ability to send photos over D-Star with a connected Android phone. Features include a wideband receiver with guaranteed range of 144 through 148 and 440 through 450 MHz. It has an integrated GPS receiver including grid square location. It also has a micro USB for data transfer, programming and charging and it's IPX7 waterproof. Visit www.icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM radios. LDG Electronics provides state-of-the-art antenna tuners for every amateur need. From QRP to QRO, fixed stations, portable and remote, an LDG tuner will match your radio to your antenna using our lightning-fast, proprietary tuning algorithms. LDG is a family-owned and operated company dedicated to bringing innovative, quality products to the amateur market. 
All LDG products carry a full two-year warranty that is fully transferable. Support is only a phone call or email away. We're always here to help you. Visit us on the web at ldgelectronics.com. All right, and we are back. And uh, hey, I was looking at the chat room here. This is supposed to be CQ uh, update tonight, and uh, normally Rich is with us. I forgot to send him a reminder. He's usually pretty good about remembering, but I did not send out a reminder this week, and Rich didn't uh, didn't make it. So, uh, man, man, oh man, uh, we'll have we'll try to have Rich on next week and uh, get get everybody an update on CQ a magazine. All right. Okay, time is up on entering the uh, tickets here. So, you know, you, you guys got to remember, you don't mess with Hambot. All right, now, Hambot uh, is going to give out a prize, but uh, we're handling this a little bit differently. You're not going to sit in a chat room. Uh, because uh, we're only wanting to get us out to someone that will use the tickets. If Hambot sat here and picked names in a chat room, we'd be going all night because uh, most of the picks he would probably pick might not be going. So uh, stand by, and the name is coming up. All right, all right. Well, and the winner of the two Hamcation tickets is Bill Bonin, Boninberger, if I said that right, Boninberger, K-A-2-O-F-M. And Bill, if I said your name wrong, I, I apologize. But Bill, uh, K-A-2-O-F-M in White Plains, New York, is the winner of the two tickets. And Mark will be mailing those out. Mark will be mailing those out to you in the morning. Uh, first thing in the morning. Congratulations, Bill. I see Bill is there in the chat room. Uh, we have a delay between our, our video here in the chat room. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks a lot, Bill, for uh, uh, sitting in your bid on them. And uh, you were the winner. K-A-2-O-F-M, White Plains, New York. That's a trip. Yeah. I think uh, he may go down here uh, pretty regularly, too. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. I was just waiting to see if he's going to respond anymore in the chat room. He's already run the tickets. The tickets, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, there you go, Bill. Uh, the tickets will be sent out tomorrow morning uh, to you. And you should receive them, uh, hopefully, in plenty of time there, Bill, to uh, to uh, have them before you head down to Orlando. want to thank Hambot for uh, doing that tonight with us. Really appreciate that. Uh, couple things real quick here. Uh, I will uh, I'll give you a quick update on uh, on uh, 106 again, and then we'll uh, I want to talk a little about this uh, remote base. That I'm working on, and let you see this remote base. Just a just a quick demo of it, and then uh, next week or the next week, I'll have more detailed uh, description of it and how it works and so forth. Okay, um, so the jet streams right now. Winter time is the best time to fly. You can see the jet streams there between the U.S. and Europe. Um, that, that jet stream right there is traveling at approximately uh, 150 miles per hour. So it looks like it'll be a good trip going across there. Here's another, uh, uh, another service that we use. This is, uh, this is uh, I think, Ventusky. And uh, if you look there, you can see the little map. I just stuck the map right there. That map is showing right there that the wind speed there is 163 miles per hour at our altitude. So um, we're really, uh, really going to be moving across here. We decided yeah, as to long go. As you don't get that northern leg there. You take that northern turn, and you're going to be stuck. Well, if we take the northern turn, it will come back down around the UK and then back down, and then we'll cross, uh, we'll cross over into Africa. 
I'd prefer taking the route right there across Africa, that southern route. That would be a lot quicker. But we'll be happy with any route as long as we can keep it in the air. So Yeah, that's true. you you got to so, make it to the ocean first. Yeah, so we, uh, we decided to try a, a little bit different this time. Uh, we're trying to, we, we, we're holding the weight to the most, the minimum weight we can hold it down to. And uh, you can see it on the scales there. That's practice. that's everything but the antenna. The antenna weighs in, the 20 meter dipole weighs in at 1.4 grams. That's amazing. We're right at 10 grams, about 10 grams total weight. So we're going to be flying at about half the uh the weight that we normally fly i had been testing the chinese 36 inch balloons uh just to try to hold cost down uh and uh, i had pressure tested and they're very strong balloons the problem is is that they're small and with it will only fly about twenty nine thousand feet the chinese balloon if we put two of them together if we put two balloons together we can gain about 10 percent or we can we can fly at about about 33,000 feet actually but that's the highest they will go there's there's uh there's storms out there if we hit a storm and the cloud tops can well exceed 30,000 feet then we come down so we decided to go with the sbs again and uh this is where you guys have probably been hearing me talk about uh balloons anonymous uh here's a few of the tubes that the balloons come in uh, I have not saved all the tubes. These are just the ones that were in my shop out there. And some of these tubes had two balloons in them each. So there's approximately $2,000 of balloons right there uh, in that picture. So you can see now why I want to join Balloons Anonymous. When you add in the cost of building the tracker for every flight and in the hydrogen gas, um, you know, it, it puts the cost on up there. But we're doing it for the show. It's one of the goals we had on the show. We've had some great support in the past from uh, many of our, uh, our viewers that, that love the uh, Pico Balloons. And they have uh, uh, donated uh, 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 funds uh, throughout different months to help us pay for uh, some of this cost. So let's see what we got here. Uh, there's uh, 106 right there hanging, hanging inside the window right now. And uh, it's hanging, and you can see the clip leads there. Uh, we got uh, external power running it. Uh, so you might say he's almost on the launch pad there, and he's fueling up, and uh, he's actually transmitting right now. Um, so uh, we will, uh, we, he's been on about, you know, 24 hours a day now for the past week. Uh, we have tested him out in the sun. We take it out, and the little, six little cells do. Uh, uh, do bring him up to operation pretty quick in about three or four minutes. Uh, they'll be up to uh, uh, operation uh, voltage. So there he is there. Um, let's see. What else we got here? Um, we talked about the, the flight uh, path. We'll be hitting the jet streams up there. This is going to be this is going to be flight 106. Huey, Dewey, and Louie are back out there again. And, uh, you know, they've had some uh, tough trips, but they've survived every trip. They've been rescued every time. We're, we're adding some new instrumentation, adding new instruments into the, uh, into the uh, craft, craft here. You notice the, the, uh, the uh, speedometer. The speedometer there actually goes up to ludicrous speed. I don't know if you can see that on the monitor or not, but... Uh, Anything after 260 miles per hour is ludicrous, and uh, I think that goes from 260 to 1,000, something like that. So uh, we hope they're uh, moving on. I mentioned earlier we've got a mission patch uh, for them, and uh, they wanted this time, just for extra luck, they wanted to take a four-leaf clover and a rabbit's foot, so that's in the patch. We've got that in the patch there. Uh, we did, you know, one of our flights, we did tape a four-leaf clover on the craft itself. But it only, uh, that's the one that went down in Mississippi near you. Uh, it didn't stay up more than about 30 minutes. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure the four-leaf clover does a lot of good to, uh, to help it there. 
So that's where we are. Uh, that's where we are with uh, 106. We're waiting on our hydrogen. Uh, we're going to check tomorrow to see if our hydrogen is in. And uh, we will be using hydrogen and we hopefully uh, will get it in the air. We're going to fly at 43,000 feet. And uh, yeah, we're going to try to go plaid. We're trying to go plaid. And if you don't know what that is, just uh, check out our Facebook group or uh, uh, Ludicrous Speed Now and then and then go and plaid. Oh, man. All right. Uh, I want to show you just a quick, this will be a teaser for the, either next week or the week after. Let me see if I can bring another camera in here and... Uh, Get something going here. Let's see. Yeah, question in the chat room here. Did yeah. you ever get your generator running? You know, the generator, all the electric, the auto transfer switches, all the electrics hooked up. The plumbers came here a week and a half ago. They ran a pipe for my meter down my wall about eight feet, and they, they capped it off and put pressure in it. Supposedly, they're going to get that tested by the, the inspector, see if it holds pressure. I'm not sure why you want to test an eight-foot piece of pipe, you know. I mean, anyway, uh, they were supposed to be back uh, Monday. They didn't show up. They were supposed to be back Tuesday. That's today. They didn't show up. And I talked to uh, my contract guy today, and uh, maybe the uh, plumbers will be back tomorrow. He has to hook it into the meter. He has to hook it to the uh, generator. But once that happens, then we'll have our 22 kW generator operating and functioning, and then we'll never have another power outage, and hopefully we'll never have to use the generator. All right, let's see. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I was going to bring up, let's see if I can do this. be able to do this huh uh, let's see look at here look at my green screen hey how you like it that's kind of cool I gotta get that green screen off all right so this is a neat little app I saw I got it on my tablet here it also run on your telephone and uh, so I'm gonna bring it up here uh, I've got it right here. I'm just going to hit the button to bring it up. And it comes up like that. And then to turn the power on, I just hold this button down, the red button down. It's sending an encrypted key, and we're on. We're on. Let's see if uh, let's see if we can find somebody on here. I'm going to try to tune it. I don't, I don't know why I'm getting all the, uh, oh, you know what? The digits are green, and that's why we're having a little trouble here. We shouldn't be having that trouble. Let me fix this. Let me fix this. There we go. That's much better, isn't it? All right. So um, let me see where the speaker is. I don't know if we can get uh, so we can get some audio here. Let's see if we can tune somebody in here with it. We can tune with a knob. Let's, uh, let's do this. If we touch here, we can key the frequency in here, like 7.180 oh, and enter. I did that wrong. 7.180. One eighty, hit enter, and we're on seventy one eighty. Um, see if I can find somebody here. Forty meters sounds pretty dead. Let's go to eighty. Let's go to eighty meters. So to go to eighty meters, we're gonna hit the band button. We're gonna click eighty. Now we're on eighty meters, it, and it switches the rig uh, automatically. We're on eighty meters. Let's see if I can find somebody here. 3850. I don't know what a good frequency is. We'll find somebody. I think I've got an antenna. Let's 
Let's see. We're bound to find somebody here in a minute. There we go. There we go. Well, he quit talking. All right. Oh. Well. Sounds awful quiet for 80. I'm trying to. Trying to find somebody here. Boy, the band's pretty dead. All right. Well, they're not talking long enough. There we go. I'm turning the noise blanker on. Can you hear that, uh, Glenn? It's kind of down. You need more audio. I'm not sure where the speaker is. Okay. So then to turn it off, we're just going to hold the um, hold the power button. You know what? That makes it better. I didn't. I, yeah. Sorry, guys. There you go. Now I got you a good picture. Come on, talk, guys. So anyway, hold, hold the button down, turn it off, and it's off. But um, you've got all the buttons here, then you can actually program the buttons to uh, do things. Like there's the antenna tuner, uh, attenuator, preamp. You can key all this stuff in, and uh, it will work. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty neat little app. This, the, the app is actually free. Uh, so that's what makes it, you know, pretty exciting. It's a free app, and it's very easy to set up and get going. Uh, and we'll talk about that maybe next week or the week after. Uh, I'll try to do a little bit better demo with it. Um, but uh, we'll, uh, I'll show you how to, how it, uh, how to uh, set it up. Um, and uh, we'll show you kind of some of the, and, and some of the other things I've kind of added to it. Which I think you'll like. Um, I have uh, I've even built a little box that you guys have seen that will actually disconnect the antenna. When I turn that off, it'll actually disconnect the antenna, and it will uh, ground the antenna, and it turn it'll turn the power supply off. And then when we hit the on button here, it actually turns the power supply on and connects the antenna. So that's pretty good if you're out traveling or you're on vacation and uh you know you may be having a well your antenna just won't be hooked up when you're not using it you know uh i pay it's not it's it's uh android only sorry it's android only but you know what you can, man you can buy you a tablet and android tablet out there for 20 30 bucks you know uh and it'll work on uh it, it also works on your phone i've had an android phone and i've used it before take my phone Put the little earbud in and, and just w walking around a block here making ham radio contacts right from the phone back to, to my uh, to my radio. My radio here is a TS570 that I'm, that I'm using for the bass, but uh, it'll match up just about to any any uh, uh, ham radio that's out there. Let's see. Oh, so let's it's see. got a little control box at your house that you, you hook up to the internet? Oh. <laughs> uh, Actually, actually, there is no control box that hooks to the internet. Well, are you, are you talking about the little box that to turn the power on and off? And I'm talking about the the box that interfaces the rig to the internet. Oh no, it's just you just use the computer. Oh, you know, okay. You, you know, you you need to. 
Now, I think this will run on Raspberry Pi. I need to talk with the developer of this, but I think you'd actually put this on a Raspberry Pi, or I think you can put it on Linux. And uh, so, you know, you could probably put it on a very small footprint and set it up in the shop. But we usually, here at home, I usually leave uh, uh, desktop computers on all the time, day and night, 24 hours a day, 365 a year. Uh, I'll probably start uh, leaving the uh, uh, this computer back here in the shack on. Um, and uh, it'll be on the UPS system. So if, if we do lose power for a few seconds, if we do lose power, that uh, we won't lose it. We got Bill joining us here. Let's get Bill in here. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. Hey. How you doing, hey, Bill? Stranger. Glad you're back with us, Ben. Sorry you were gone so long, and the news about your dad there. But I guess you made it home, haven't you? Yeah, I uh, escaped uh, seven inches of snow uh, oh, boy. by one day. So wow. I, I uh, had beautiful weather all the way back, and it's been the fifties here. But uh, up there where I was staying, it's uh, they're all snowed in and wind chill below zero. Now, I know that there was a lot of stuff you were, for months, you were cleaning out up there, the barn and other things. I, I'm i sure there were treasures that you found. Are you bringing any of that stuff back to Huntsville? Or did you, did you, rent I did. A, uh, you rent an 18-wheeler? Did you get you an 18-wheeler, or how did you do that? <laughs> uh, I had the van filled up. Uh, it looked like the Beverly Hillbillies truck. <laughs> The only thing I was missing was Granny in the rocking chair on the top. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, but in the barn, I did find gold. In the mix to all the other trash there, I found gold. Yeah. I Whoa. found 20 bird watt meter slugs. Oh, man. Well, hey, I've got a couple bird watt meters here, but I'm missing some slugs. Such a deal I'll make for you. <laughs> all right. got to see what kind you got, you know. I'm looking for low band slugs, you know, HF slugs. Yeah, yeah. Are most of, most of those the uh, VHF? I'll have to. Uh, I just brought them in from the van. I'll have to go get them. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. But that was the big finds. All right. And, well. and a bunch of World War II memorabilia and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well. Um. A lot of people have missed you here. We were wondering. and Well, it's going to be good to be back. Yep. Now, I had heard maybe that uh, you're not going to make it down to Orlando. Is that true? Uh, no, probably not. I'm a little traveled out at the moment. Well, I was just wondering, you know, here you are with working for NASA, and you're fixing to blast a rocket off to some planet here, and, you know, you've been out a couple months. Were you able to work uh, from Ohio? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we could, uh, we're all, most of us are telecommuting and have been doing so since March of 2020. And so um, if I had an internet connection, I could work from the North Pole. Oh, really? And in fact, Ohio felt like the North Pole. Really. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, that's the beauty, but I could be anywhere and uh, my laptop is my office. Yeah, I was up in St. Louis this weekend, and it was like 17 degrees. So, oh, man, man, it was cold. Yeah, yeah. Um, Absolutely. All right, well, welcome back. You can help us uh, track our next launch. We hope to get get 106 off in uh, maybe a few days. We're waiting on hydrogen. Uh, once we get it, we'll try to get this thing in the air. We're going st strictly bare bones, trying to hold it down. We've, the ants have been on a diet, actually. Uh, <laughs> they have lost half their weight, and uh, the entire the entire uh, craft now with the antenna is 10 grams. So I thought we did good at holding everything to 10 grams. That's so, good. So uh, we're going to fly another SBS. Uh, I was gonna go with the uh, Chinese balloons, man, Bill. They look tough. I, you know, this is the first time I've ever inflated one out there, and I put the you man. You have on. to touch them up. 
I put the manometer. I put the manometer on them, and they will hold some pressure, man. Yeah. They will. They will flat hold. Now, I, I've never done that with the SPS. I'm afraid I might destroy it, so I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to fly the SPS like it is. But uh, man, those uh, that 36 inch clear. Uh, I got a lot of inches of water column on it. A lot more than what the the pressure is going to be up there. And I took a hair dryer and I got some of the wrinkles out and played with it, you know. And, and uh, I don't know. I was I was ready to launch two of them, but you know, if we have our choice to fly thirty three thousand or forty three thousand, I'd rather fly forty three. Uh, this time of year, however, is a good time to fly at the lower altitudes. Uh, there's yeah. uh, fewer you know, there's no thunderstorms to speak of. Uh, well, I'm looking. I'm looking for long term. I well, we had a serious meeting with the ants today, and we're looking long term, not just flying during the winter here. We want to make it through the summer, uh, this this summer yeah. and fall. Well, so we've had one. Uh, we have one that's uh, flying with uh, the SBS balloon out of Pella, Iowa, WB zero URW dash um, thirteen. I think it is. Uh, They've been around the world, uh, they've been up for 80 days and around the world five times, I think. There's, so let's see, what's, there's another one, FOU, I think, 11. Uh, KD2 FOU. He's been uh, around been at least up. 15 times. Yeah, they've been, in, they've been doing great. Yeah, so I figure it's about time for us again just to hit that magic, magic launch and... You know, from day one, I always said you only gonna only one out of ten is gonna make it around, and uh, that's held pretty true. And yeah. well, I think we're on our tenth one again. Yeah. Well, the key is you just got to get past that forty-three thousand foot number. Well, that's where this one's gonna fly. I mean, yeah, we we just got to hang in there at forty-three. Uh, that's about the maximum altitude for this balloon, so uh, it, it just isn't going to go higher. I wish we had something to go higher, but... And you know, the thing about it is we went really high, 55, 60,000. The, the wind's only moving up there about three miles an hour. That might be a really boring, <laughs> boring trip, you know, at three miles an hour around the world. Let's see. How many miles is it around the world? Is it like 29,000? 30,000? Miles or oh, twenty-two thousand or yeah. so, twenty-three thousand. Twenty, say twenty-one thousands to make the math easy. Three hundred twenty-one thousand. That's seven. About two and a half years. What's that? Let's see. It's I don't need my, my mind's not my around. mind's not working. But let me tell you, three miles an hour, it's gonna take a long <laughs> time. Hey, uh, I did something interesting on APRSFI the other day. You can get the weather, look at the weather stations that have pressure sensors. I saw that. And, and a friend of mine was uh, uh, mentioned this. I wonder if we could see the pressure wave from the Tonga volcano explosion. So I went to Australia and I found uh, one of those weather stations that had a pressure sensor on APRS. And I, I centered it on the window of where that explosion occurred and sure enough it was a huge spike uh and it was this amount of time it took to get there was two hours which is exactly the speed of sound oh, so man. i i looked in farther places yeah japan and australia and california and peru they all showed the spike at exactly the amount of time it would have taken the speed of sound to reach them. Wow. It was even seen in Florida. On the west coast of Florida, I could see a little spike <clears throat> in 10 hours after the, uh, it took 10 hours to get there. And I actually saw it in Portugal, which is completely on the other side of the world. It took like 12, 14 hours to get to Portugal. Yeah. And that's, well that's how powerful that explosion was. But the really neat thing was the power of amateur radio with all these sensors worldwide that you can go to APRSFI and look at those charts and, and see it. Yeah. And also, I was reading, I don't know if it's true or not, where this, this uh, solar flare two days ago, 
uh, took out about four Pico balloons. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. You uh, heard well, any... they came, well, I, think, I know one of them came back, but uh, the propagation was knocked out. Yeah, yeah. It may have been just a propagation deal. Yeah, it was a black solar blackout, HF blackout. Yeah. Okay. Well, guys, we're going to um, tell you what. Um, this, uh, you're listening to, you're out there on shortwave, you're listening to a roundtable. It's a ham radio show. I'm Tom, W5KUB, coming to you out of western Tennessee. All about ham radio. And uh, you can join us uh, on our show if you just go to W5KUB.com on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. That would be uh, 0200 UTC Wednesdays, I think, now, with the time change. I never can keep that straight. Um, so we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and open up the, uh, the Zoom here. Let's see if we can get a few people to join us here. So we're now going to transition into the show after the show. So we are now going to the show after the show, guys. And Roundtable is officially kind of going to close down. You know, I've had a few people complain that Roundtable is too long. They can't sit still for like two hours. So we decided. I I can't. Huh? I can't. So we decided just to say Roundtable ends after about an hour and uh, the show after the show starts. And it goes for an hour, okay? So, you know, so we're on the, the show after the show now. And, let and, we, and we know Rodan and Godzilla can't sit still for that long. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to post Godzilla a link. Godzilla made her appearance tonight. Yeah, I just posted the link there. If you will, click on that link and you can join us on Zoom and be part of the show. We'll bring you right into the video here of, of the show. And again, if you will, guys, we need you to subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button right there. Uh, we really need you to hit that subscribe button. Uh, I think the arrow's pointing toward it. Uh, that helps us out a whole lot. Let's see who that is right there. Ah, oh, it's Charlie. Charlie's in there. Let's see. Hang, hang on a second. Raspberry Pi something. Ooh. Pico, wow. Let's get... Uh... All right. Hey. hey, welcome, Charlie. Charlie is in Uruguay. Welcome, Charlie. Hello. You are the every week clown. How are you? Hey, man. <laughs> How you doing? Fine. Good to see you there. Okay. Uh, well, anything happening down in uh, Uruguay? Uh, any any ham fest or anything? Anything happening? No, no. We are uh, too few for 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 ham fest. We we don't have ham fest here. You don't have it's that concept. People. No, no. It's not the concept. The people. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I thought maybe if you didn't yeah. have a concept, we could come down here and charge people to come to it something new you know yeah, yeah. i'd really like to go to 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 a, a good ham fest maybe uh, yeah sometime i was gonna say charlie when do you get to go to a ham fest and where yeah where what's the closest to <laughs> yeah well yeah oh i tell you yeah dayton um We've been going for about 39 years now to Dayton, and uh, it's 500 miles up, 500 miles back. That's a tough trip, and uh, if you walk around and see everything, you get so tired of walking. I mean, it is it is major, you know. And that'll be coming up in May, I think. Yeah, I think I've decided to fly this year. Yeah, uh, did you? I haven't booked my ticket yet, yeah. but I've been seriously considering it because that 500-mile drive is yeah. its a long yeah. drive alone. It's a tough one. Well, you know, hey, uh, when we do go this year, now I got my I got my HF rig, you know. <laughs> I, got, I got my HF rig here, man, in my truck, you know, man. I'll let my buddies do the driving, and I'll just sit back there. And I've got a headset with a mic I can plug in here and, you know, make contacts and work DX and all that. And, and hey, I don't even have to put an antenna on the truck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. We got uh hey there, I see a Charles in there. Hey Charles, how you doing? I saw uh, I saw Bill join us a while ago. And Tim, Tim Conway's in there. 
We'll say hello to, to everybody there. Just move closer. Yeah, yeah. All right. If you're going to join us, here we go. Here's the link. Check the link out. <clears throat> uh, so I've got a couple projects I'm working on here. And, um, you know, Glenn, this, this uh, remote base, I had this thing working a couple years ago, and I had built that box that plugged into it that disconnects the antenna and, and uh, powers the power supply off, but it, I couldn't make it work. I, so I don't know if the software has been upgraded to something new, and I don't have the, the switching DTR or request to send pins in my cable anymore. So, you know, I started thinking, they make a commercial unit that does this. It's, it's called Wemo. You know what a Wemo is? No, I'm not familiar with that. It's one. just a little, it's just a little plug, a little plug box that plugs in a plugs in your plug, and it's Wi-Fi, and you got an app on your phone, and you can turn it on and off. So, um, so I, I've converted the box to where you know it just it'll be powered on and off with the Wemo, and uh, just uh, so when I get ready to use the remote base, I'll uh, hit the Wemo and say turn on the power supply, and then I'll say. You know, open up the radio and we'll be going. Very cool. I'm still old school. I've got the HF in the car. I tried that in my Silverado truck. I I, did, I didn't have any good luck with it. First of all, you know, I had to put a big old antenna on there, and I I did I just put a whip on there, and I put a, a auto antenna tuner back at the whip, so. I didn't have to get out to change taps or anything or, you know, it's just with the auto tuner, you just hit it with a little bit of power and it automatically tunes its resin. So you could band jump really easy. But I uh, put it in the truck and, man, I got so much ignition noise and, and, and fuel pump noise and uh, all kinds of noise, man. I, I grounded everything, you know, the tailpipes, the springs, the motor, right? I granted, I never could quieten it down very much, and uh, and then the only the other bad thing about it is if I have a radio in a truck like that, it's going to be stolen. Somebody's going to break the window out, and they're going to take the radio. And I've had the radio in the car for gosh six seven years. Yeah, but nobody wants that radio. Yeah, nobody wants the Yasus. This what now, you're see, trying I to was told. Me? Yeah, you know, we talked. <laughs> I, I think we talked last time about Bofang radios. Don't leave a bowfang lay out, laying out in your seat, in your truck or your car. Do not leave a bowfang handy talkie laying here. Somebody will break your window out, and they'll lay another handy talkie on a seat next to that one. <laughs> but I actually uh, went to a cat show about three years ago, and that the Huntsville show is traditionally on the weekend of field day, so I was making some field day contacts going over to Huntsville. And uh, yeah. I don't happen to have that noise problem in, in my Explorer. Yeah, I think, uh, let's see, Danny asked, what antenna do I use? I don't know if he's sent that question to me. I put a 102-inch a steel whip, hundred you know, your standard CB whip. You can get them free. You just ask around. Somebody's going to have one. They'll give you one free. So I put a 102-inch whip on there. And or just trade them a Baofeng for it. And, uh, yeah, and according to the uh, the antenna uh, auto tuner, uh, the 102 inch whip it would it would easily tune anywhere from uh, 80 meters through six meters. It wouldn't do 160. But uh, the nice thing about it with the little auto tuner sitting back there at the antenna, man, you just hit it with power for about a half a second, and it goes click click, and you're tuned to resonant. You change bands and put a little power to it, and you know it all band instant uh, instant tuning. So it's really neat, but I just I just failed at I, the I failed at I the have a question. Yeah, yeah. What what tune are you using uh, for the remote? For the remote, the, this remote I'm showing tonight. No, the one. No, the one in the car. Oh, I or was using truck. I was using the. Uh, it's a. Uh, 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 gee. Is that the, uh, the it's, it's the uh, it's, it's the uh, oh, gee. 
SBI was 100, something like that. No, it's... um. Wasn't it the SG-237? Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. The SG-237. Yeah. Oh, okay. The all SG. right, all right. So, yeah. um, I, I used a, what was it? Uh, an Outbacker, uh, Outbacker Plus. Uh-huh. Uh, and I had a, um, uh, what was it? A, a, a Yezu FT-900. And basically, I, I would have to get out and move the stinger up or down, yeah. you know, for, for whatever band I wanted. But I would start out on 40 meters, leaving here at midnight, heading to Florida. And I would get in the uh, East cars on 7255 and carry that all the way down to, I don't know, on the other side of D.C. And then... um I'd have to switch over to uh, 20 meters and uh, for the rest of it. And then about 4 o'clock, I'd just put it back to uh, 40 meters. And about uh, 20 minutes uh, twenty minutes past 7, I'd turn it to 39.45 and uh, check into the North Carolina. No, uh, no, the Virginia. The Virginia <laughs> phone net. Uh, to say hello to some of the people that I knew when I lived in D.C. So I mean, you know, it was it was fun. Well, you're a you're a brave guy. You had to get out and actually move a tap or something occasionally, right? Or move. I did. The but length, what, the but you want to know something, hey Tom? Yeah. I also had a a, a, th a three eighths inch um, mobile uh, antenna mount. Yeah, they had four antennas. I mean, four four magnets on it, and stuck it on the roof. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I had a M O M O U two two from Hustler, and one of those little triangle thingies there. And yeah. I had yeah. forty on top, fifteen, twenty, and and, and ten. Yeah. And I'd go down the road, and, and uh, all kinds of stuff going on there. Yeah, I had that too back in the early days. In fact, I still got my Hustler uh, resonators and stuff in here in that little mass, but. You know, the thing about it, the bandwidth on those things were pretty small. They were maybe 100 kilohertz or something like that. Uh, and, you know, if you wanted to operate down the bottom end of the band, you'd have to adjust the, the length of the But you only need stinger. one frequency to get out. Yeah. Right. But, you know, I, I was going to tell Bill, he's awful brave, see, to get out and do that kind of – I mean, down here in the south, man, in the wintertime, in the wintertime, when it gets down to like 48, 49 degrees, I don't want to get out of the car and go back there and change the tap or anything. See, so that's why I use the auto tuner to uh, to automatically, instantly tune the antenna for any band, man. This, this is this is what I had to yeah change the the, the length on on those hustler. Um, Little little thingy doos there. Right. It's on my it's on my keychain. I mean, oh man. <laughs> And I just pull into I just pull into a rest area, Tom. Yeah. And yeah. And, and just get out and change the change the stinger from forty to eighty to twenty, whatever, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, how many people have operated CW at Mobile? Mm -hmm. uh, there's only one person I know of. He worked at the Pentagon in Washington D.C. and he had it strapped to his knee. And he, he'd be driving out Route 66 to wherever the heck he lived out in the mountains there, and he'd be sending CW. And I looked at him and I said, "You got to be crazy." I says, what, with, "With the traffic on 66, I says I wouldn't even." He says, "Who cares?" He says, "I could send and and, and and drive at the same time." I did. I did the same thing driving out west, not quite in congested traffic, but I'd be on the interstate out in the middle of Arizona, New Mexico, driving across country, and I'd have my key strapped to my leg, and a straight key, and I can copy the code in my head, and I just, I had all kinds of conversations on CW. Well, you know, we need to get Chip on here. Um, if you don't have a key, you can whistle it. <laughs> I, don't know if you, I don't know if you guys have seen the video where um, at one of the uh, ham fests, Chip Marginelli, uh, actually whistled a CW conversation, and another guy copied it, and they timed him. <laughs> you know. Oh, that was, that was, that was I can't terrible. whistle. Man. That was terrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, you remember I, when you I, was at a, I was at a rock concert 
years ago in Berkeley, California, and we had they handed out noisemakers to everybody, uh, basically little whistles. And I started whistling Morse code, and somebody five rows away answered answered me. you back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we were back in the old days. I mean, you know, hey, you could you could send out a you could send your call out by your car horn, and you know. If you knew somebody was in the area, they might answer you, you know. We did crazy stuff back then. My dad was telling me about radio school. Um, they also had a band, and one of the band members would play the trumpet. And uh, he would play Reveille in the morning and taps at night and then add a little Morse code message right afterwards on the trumpet. <laughs> well... The Morse code has been sent in many ways. Uh, did you know uh, back back during the uh, Vietnam War, the prisoner of prisoner of war people, yeah, uh, they actually sent Morse code when they were on video one time. The guy actually sent Morse code I think it was Cor with Cor his Korea. eyes. It was Korea. No, no, it wasn't. Uh, oh, was it Korea? Yeah. I no, think. no, no. It was Vietnam. Was it? Well, they, they actually knocked it. on the walls. May have done it. May have done it. No, both no, no. Places. No, no. But it was. I think it was it was a famous uh, it was that was famous because he was on TV. Yeah. yeah. The, the, he was a prisoner of war. They yeah. put him on TV to show that he was okay and he was well uh, treated fine. But then he he with his uh, with his eyelids. I he think he said the word. I think he, he said he, the word torture. That was Vietnam. Torture. Yeah. 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 No, that was Vietnam because Korea they didn't have TV. Charlie, sorry. No, no, no. It, it, uh... yeah, it could have been video. It could have been. A video no, it was clip. Vietnam, and he blinked torture. Yeah, that was torture there. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. anyway, wherever it was, well, that's, see, that's that another guy. use. That's another use for Morse code. You can see it with your eyes. Now, I, uh, my roommate and I. Uh, we were both hams, and we decided to uh, see if we could send answers to our exam from other sides of the auditorium. So I, I would tap with my pencil 20, and he would respond with C, and then he would respond 30, and I would go B, and our system was working great. Man, and I don't know. Heard, you know, hey, I, I have a hard time telling the difference between a dit and a da when you when you're hitting a wall or your it's, your table. You know, it's basically, you you make the pencil rattle like a drumstick. Like yeah, yeah. A drum. But anyways, uh, there was a very long message, and I said, "What is my roommate sending?" And it said, "If I hear any more pencil tapping, you will both fail." Mm. And it was the instructor who was also a ham, but we didn't know that. Yeah. So. The point is, if you have a secret language, make sure the person you're trying to uh, send the secret message to, make sure no one else in the room knows it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we played uh, a chess game that. that way once, too. My uh, roommate was a chess master, and he basically couldn't participate in our uh, dormitory uh, chess match. The practical joker that everybody ha hated um he was destined to play me and he was the top rated uh chess player he had threw a smoke bomb into our room the night before so my roommate who was judging and marking the chess moves said bill we're going to beat him you're not going to play i'm going to tap the moves to you and you move the pieces and i'm going to play i know i can beat him and so he did. He tapped his pencil, tapped nervously in between marking down the plays and told me exactly where to move the chess pieces. <laughs> and we wiped him out in like six moves. He was, the guy was devastated, but he shouldn't have thrown a smoke bomb into our room. <laughs> well, that's tough, you know. Yeah, I've checked it here and it, it was in the Vietnam yeah. And it was, let me show, let me see. It was Admiral Jeremiah Dentron, Jr. And wow. it says here, use his eyes to blink the word torture using Morse code during his captivity in Vietnam. He was yeah. being filmed for propaganda purposes, and this video was broadcast around the world. 
naval intelligence was able to decipher his strange thinking. He was awarded the Navy Cross, our nation's second highest military honor for his heroism as a prisoner of war. That's oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bill, you shouldn't do smoke bombs. I never did a smoke bomb in college, but do you ever do the do you ever do the uh, shaving cream in an envelope? You stick it under the edge of a door and stomp it. You ever done one of those? It goes all over the other room, inside the room, man. And it, hey, man, I think it's like my second day in 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 college, and the guy opens the door. He's about seven foot tall. He weighs about three hundred and fifty pounds. Looks like he was all muscle. He basically told me, don't do that again. <laughs> we lined up uh, about 100 uh, beer cans and Coke cans half filled with water against our uh, one of the room oh, doors. And, and we left bad. a little space so you could see the expression when the guy opened the door. That's bad. And they all came caving into his room. <laughs> That's bad, man. The worst one was a weather balloon stuck through the air vents and the door filled with water. And when the guy opened the door, he couldn't open the door, but he gave it one big shove and it burst the weather balloon and it backfired on us because it flooded our rooms too. Mm. All right. Well, What's new out here? Let's, let's find something. Let's see. Who, who else is in here? We got Charlie. I see. There's another Charles in here. Okay. A question, yeah. um, Tom. About the super cups you are using, yeah. I've, I've, uh, there is some new super cups that are called uh, lithium cups. They're called. It's a, really? it's a hybrid between lithium batteries and super cups. You know, and they may be much lighter. I don't know. Yeah, they are. They are. Of course, they are. You know, they have the 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 pros of both the lithium and the super cup thing. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, a lithium battery is so much. I mean, it, it packs so much power, and it's so much smaller than a a, uh, a NICAD or something. You know, your other or a, a primary cell battery, and so the, the uh, that's interesting. It might be a very very light. That might be a good yeah, replacement. Yeah, if I remember correctly. The the thing is one of the the process has you can charge it, charge it uh, very fast as the super cup uh, because the lithium battery you cannot charge it very fast but the super cup you can and this can be charged very fast but I don't know I I saw a video in in YouTube of a guy explaining the differences maybe yeah. I can then uh, send it to you well I'd I'd be interested in the weight. Oh, but I think that super. Caps. It has some some curves about uh, weight to capacity. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Rate. So I don't know. Yeah. And I have a question to Glenn too. Hey Glenn, the this Raspberry Pico thing or Nano? I don't know its name. Raspberry Pi. Yeah, it's the Pico. The Pico. Uh, the, it, that it, is that running a full uh, Linux. Uh, system or it's just a something that uh, runs uh, some like s my, a circuit Python or micro Python no, no it is a, a microcontroller similar to the Arduino but where the Arduino does C++ uh, this the Raspberry Pi runs Python which is another yeah, yeah, Python is an interpreted language. But yeah, it is a pure in Python interpreter on the chip. Yeah. So it, it's not a not Linux at all. Okay, and and the footprints are compatible with Arduino? No. Let me get out of the bag here. This is the, the Pico. And there's... Oh, an no, Arduino. sorry, with the Arduino Nano. With, uh, yeah, it's close to the size of a Nano, but it's got a lot more pins. Okay. Yes. Okay. 
It's got a yeah, I see. load of pins. Yeah, bigger. And uh, about it's it's powerful about the the speed and everything. It's some it's powerful. I haven't really even looked up the specs on the speed, but yeah, it's you have to play with it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's one of those I've been wanting to play with it and heard about it. And finally, it was when Joe Eisenberg and I were at Micro Center. They had them, and I'm like, let me okay. just get a couple while I'm here. And, and they are that 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 uh, cheap, three dollars. Three dollars, yeah. Let me yeah. let me call up the specs on that thing here. Let's see here. Um. Uh, it's a dual core ARM Cortex M0 running up to 133 megahertz. 264K of static RAM and 2 meg of onboard flash. It's got USB with device and host support. 26 GPIO pins. 2 SBI, 2 I2C, 2 UARTs. And three 12-bit A to D controllers, uh, accurate clock and timer, a temperature sensor, floating point library on the chip, and eight programmable state machines for custom peripheral support. That's a heck of a lot for a three-dollar chip. Oh, three dollars. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't see the kitchen sink listed here, but that's darn close to it. Yeah. And it uses the RP2040 microcontroller chip. And that's designed by Raspberry Pi. Very cool. I'm looking forward to playing with it. It's it's going to be down the road, but it also comes with a C++ software development kit as well. So you can go kind of either way, but... I want to get into Python because that seems to be what everybody's playing with these days. And uh, just looking for something new, something different to play with. Yeah. And at three bucks a pop, you know, what the heck. I mean, heck, right. I, I, the Arduinos are up to six bucks because of this chip shortage. It's crazy. The Arduino's up to six now, six dollars. Yeah, but that's what, like the Nano or something, or yeah. Uh, well, oh, okay. that's the Uno. Oh, okay. You know, and it uses the same chip you're using, yeah, the 328P. Yeah. But the thing is, there's such a shortage of those that you know prices have gone up. I think the three the 328Ps now are somewhere high two dollars, three dollars. Yeah, but when you you oh, stick okay. them on the board and everything, and now they're yeah. they're six bucks. If you can buy them, uh, I looked at DigiKey and it was uh, 2023 before they were going to get any. Man, I just got lucky, I guess, when I got mine from. I got mine through Ali, AliExpress and it worked. Uh, they weren't dummies, so. That's good. Well, I pay here around between 10 and $15 for an, an Chinesium Arduino Nano. Hmm. Like, uh, well, uh, Chinese one, it's not the, the... Well, those are the ones I get, too. Yeah. But yeah. They're, they're six bucks for us, and I usually get them with free shipping. Yeah. You know, and I, know, I, I buy them by the boatload. You know, usually buy about five or five to ten at a time when I, when I do buy. But I'm not like Tom, who buys, you know, hundreds of chips at once. Well, I don't, I don't buy that many at once. Bill's a guy that buys that many. Bill. Build the GPS modules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I was, uh, in the chat room, they're talking about the supply chain issues affecting ham radio. Uh, Ford just announced they weren't taking any more orders on their, their latest pickup truck, the new Maverick pickup truck. They stopped taking orders because they just physically cannot get them built because of the chips i heard there right. are thousands thousands of brand new trucks on the lot that they, they without chips 
And yeah. they're probably they're probably going to skip a year, a model year, and re remodel those for the next year. Just because they can't get the chips. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And it, I think it happens with the phones and all that stuff. That there used to be more uh, model launches every year, and now they are getting like less frequent. So. I keep thinking it's time to buy a new car, but I keep looking, and I'm like, never mind, I'll wait. Well, you know, uh, KC3CYR says he waited four months for a battery. Uh, you know, the, the generator I ordered, it, it took seven months to get that 22,000-watt Generac generator. I'm just wondering if that was because uh maybe chips or something I, I you know I, I don't know the real cause maybe the supply chain is but i think those are made in the u.s but probably some of the parts are not yeah but all the chips are coming from overseas these days yeah. we don't i don't think we have a whole lot of manufacturing for chips in the u.s anymore well glenn well maybe you and i need to open up a chip manufacturing company you know now i tell you what you open it and i'll buy them from you okay hmm. They're going to be a million dollars a piece. Never mind them. We'll let uh, Bill buy them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I really think that we, I think the U.S. should start making their own chips and stuff and medicines, man. I mean, we depend on too much, you know, from overseas. And Well, the big thing now is cat food. Cat food? Or pet food in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're saying there's going to be a shortage on pet foods. And uh, my my two monsters are on, uh, you know, it, it's not necessarily special cat food, but it is, um, you know, a, a specific brand uh, made for their particular breed and, and everything. And it's touch and go sometimes on when I can get it. And I, you know, generally order it weeks in advance. But uh, certain certain pet foods are hard to come by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I don't know if you've been to the store recently, but I'm on a special diet, and about half of the stuff that I can eat is not in stock anymore. Yeah, I, I uh, my dad wanted Rice Krispies right before Christmas. And everywhere I looked, every store I went to, there was a big empty spot in the shelf where the Rice Krispies were supposed to go. I had to buy uh, simulated Rice Krispies from another brand. I haven't we seen actually, a box of saltines in weeks. And we eventually, what we ended up doing was have to buy Rice Krispies on Amazon at yeah. times the price. Yeah, and... Uh, like I say, for me, it's it's the you know, I don't I don't eat saltines anymore. But even the the whole wheat and, and no salt versions, I haven't seen a box of the saltine type crackers in the store in weeks. You uh, talking the regulars, the regular saltines? Yeah, I haven't wow. seen them. the the shelf. We got them up here. here. <laughs> Yeah. The shelves down you want me to send you some? <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. There's certain products though that are just literally gone. Uh, the um, oh gosh, I can't remember who makes them, but they're uh, chicken biscuit bre uh, breakfast sandwiches uh, made by Smithfield Farms. Uh, the Nashville Hot. <laughs> Haven't seen a box of those in the store in four months. Well, and now it's the uh, some of the, you know, the various. Like I say, it depends a, a a little bit here, a little bit there of every brand, every product derivation um, that that just goes missing, and then they'll get a shipment, and that lasts about a week before it gets cleaned out again. Well, hey guys, I want to do a special shout out here to our friend Tim. Conway, WB8HRO, he's in Zoom here. He 
she's in a uh, assisted living type home up north, and uh, uh, he really enjoys ham radio. And he said, "Man, he's even talked the maintenance staff into putting up antennas. He has a ham shack in, in his room there." Very cool. How you doing, Tim? Can you hear us? He's he's uh, muted. I don't know if he heard us or not. Tim is one of our faithful uh, viewers. He's in here, I think, every single week. He's even here when I'm not here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Ron in the chat room is talking about uh, baseball caps. That, that he uh, does the, the call sign embroidery at the ham fest. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Yeah, by the way, Ron was up there at uh, Collinsville this weekend as well. Got to see him. Yeah. And, uh, so you're going to go down to the Jackson, Mississippi Ham Fest coming up what, next week? Me? Yeah, I'm going on. Yeah. Man, I already go down here, but I don't know. I'm staying I, over. I've got a table down there. I'm staying over Friday night because yeah. I just don't want to drive down and back on the I same I mean, it's day. not that large a Ham Fest. You can see it all in one day. No, but, it'll be about the same size as Collinsville. Yeah, yeah. And, uh. But, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I mean, they always have good stuff for sale. MFJ usually shows up. And uh, Martin generally shows up. You know, I don't know if he yeah. will this year or not. But in the past, Martin and the MFJ folks, all of them typically show up there. Yeah, I talked to Martin this week. Um, he wants to come back on the show. It's just uh, we've got to figure out when, uh, you know, when he has the time and he wants to join us. So I'm glad Martin will be coming back some with us. Yeah, and DJ in the chat room, as far as we know, Dayton is still on. There has been no news that they're going to cancel. And uh, I was talking earlier, I've decided I'm going to fly this year. So I'm going to get my, I've already have my room reservation up there. And uh, matter of fact, I've just been carrying over, rolling my, bed and breakfast room reservation over for the past two years fortunately they let me do it so um, i've got a room there right in xenia at a bed and breakfast so all i got to do is get my plane trip scheduled i hope there you got a good there. rate i hope you got a good rate there in xenia well i checked some of the hotels there there's a couple of new hotels and, and glenn they're wanting like 280 bucks a night yeah now, this is a uh, a bed and breakfast that uh, i've been staying at uh, for oh. the last Three or four Xenia uh, trips. Mm -hmm. Well, ever since they moved to Xenia, and uh, been staying there, and it's quite reasonable. I don't know if they've changed the rates up or not, but you know, I had my reservation and everything in, so I'm okay for this year. Next year, I may have to pay. But uh, I'm right there in downtown Xenia, and the one of the school bus pickup points is you know just about a block and a half away. Well, well, Glenn, you're going to have to go over to the big boy there. Um, it, it, it's on uh, East Main Street. Oh, wait, no, West Main Street. Okay, <clears throat> and um, seven o'clock in the morning, they have a a buffet that you just would not believe. And that's at the big boy. Yes, sir. I, I think it was like 12 bucks or something like that, but I'll tell you, you well, get everything. It's all you can eat. <laughs> yeah. yeah say, hi to the guy with the, say hi to the guys with the blue caps. <laughs> they, they, they'll, welcome you, they'll welcome you at their table, sir. Well, Bill, Bill hadn't got this figured out yet. Like many years ago, when we would we stay at the Drury, Drury Inn there in, in uh, Dayton, and they always had this great free big breakfast every morning. And about half the hams that came to uh, Dayton that weekend knew to go to the Drury for breakfast. They'd just walk in and have breakfast free uh, every morning, even though they wouldn't even stay in at the hotel. I was up the street from that. Yeah. There's always Walmart there between my hotel and the Drury. <laughs> 
yeah, I mean, I used to stay over in, in Dayton. Um, gosh, I forget the name of the street, but it's where the, the QRP Archie folks stayed. And that was kind of Hotel Row over there. And uh, when they switched to Xenia, we found a bed and breakfast that's right in downtown Xenia. And that just worked out perfect for us. I stayed at the same hotel, a country, uh, what is it, Country Inn and Suites or Comfort Inn and Suites, right across from the... Uh, yeah, the Air Holiday Force Inn. Museum, right across from the Air Force Museum. And it was the same distance to O'Hare as it was over to Xenia, so I just kept staying at that particular one. And it was very convenient to the Air Force Museum, too. Yeah, I have yet to make it to the Air Force Museum. Well, you need to spend a, more than a day out there. You can't hardly see it in a day. Yeah, and I Absolutely. won't be able to this year. Uh, my time is, you know, having changed jobs, I haven't accrued any vacation time, and I'm treated like a new hire, so I don't get any real time. So it's, I'm scrimping and counting the, you know, hours are like pennies right now. I'm just counting them up. Do I have enough hours to go here or there or wherever? And because uh, we got a cat show coming up in July that the demons have to go to. Uh, I've got Orlando and Dayton and uh, then their cat show and maybe able to fit one or two more in there. You do the one in New York? No. Didn't no. know there was one. I thought there was. I'm generally limited on my travel to a degree. Um, well, yeah, you got those two varmints that you got to carry. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I did used to go uh, to the Madison Square Garden cat show years ago. As a matter of fact, uh, this cat, these kids, great, 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 great aunt actually took a best in show there back in wow. '89. So we used to fly. That cat flew everywhere. She had her own frequent fire account. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as far as ham fest, I'm kind of kind of limited to Huntsville, Orlando, and Dayton, plus whatever I can drive to. You know, St. Louis. That was just a turned out to be a shorter trip than I really thought. It was only like a four and a half hour drive each way. You must have been flying. It was pure interstate, so it yeah. was a nice yeah. little ride. Just put it on cruise control and sit back. And it was through Arkansas and Missouri, and I mean, Friday the roads were empty almost. I had it all to myself. All right. It felt good. you know. It, it almost felt like the old days again, being able to get out on the road and go to a ham fest and you know, just have fun for a weekend. Hey, when is Winter Field Day? Um, it's this weekend also. This weekend? Yeah. Are you going to do anything? No, I'm going to be in Jackson. Oh, that's right. They have the ham fest on a weekend field day? That's where. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, I could do Sunday some, but my station's kind of in a state of flux because I'm selling two rigs and I'm fixing to buy two rigs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm selling my 950 and my 847, and I want to get me the uh, FTDX 101 MP and the uh, ICOM 9700. You know, so I've got rigs down and spaces open. The not ninety seven hundred is that the v, is that the VHF? VHF UHF? Yeah, I thought about getting one of those, but I don't. Yeah, want to get don't. that for satellite work. Well, I got to get up on my roof and get my two rotors down, bring them in here, and see why they're not turning. I don't know what's going on. Well, mine. If I don't turn mine every now and then, it'll get sticky. Well, and see, that's yeah. I I used to work mine, you know, back and forth a little bit, and it would start going. You know, I think the grease or something maybe it was getting cold or something. Or yeah, uh, but I, I got one. My my elevation one, I can't even get it to move. So yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, you're probably gonna have to take it apart. Yeah. Well, I hate doing that. When you take it apart, things got like fifty seven ball bearings in the top piece. Oh it, gosh, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've man. done that. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty dirty job to get all that grease off all, every one of those steel balls and uh, bearings and clean, clean it, it out. all off and re-grease it. Yeah, yeah. It's been there, done that a few times. But uh, also, we've got the uh, the April Fool Ham Fest in Corinth coming up, and that's the same day as the Mississippi Cuso party, so I'm torn between which of those I'm going to do. Current, current, current. Yeah. I, I may drive down here for that one. I don't know. Yeah. That's not that, well, it's probably an hour or so drive and not very far. Yeah, it's right an hour and a half from, from yeah. my house to Corinth. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then we got the Memphis Free Fest the following week. I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, as far as I know, they're still on. All right. And I'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there to that one for sure. And I think that's my last ham fest on the books. Uh, and then it's the cat show. Mm -hmm. And that's usually on a field day weekend. So kind of toss a coin. But this yeah. is going to be the kids' last cat show. When, so when is the be... free fest? Do I? When's free when fest? is the free fest? I'm pretty sure that it's the ninth, something like that. I mean, ninth of what? Is it February? Uh, let's see. Hang on. Or is it April? Seems like it was. Uh, April 9th. Okay, April. Um, and as far as everything is saying that it's on. Yeah. It's a pretty good hand yeah, fest, it's, you know. Is that a pretty good size hand fest? Yeah, it's all inside. Well, no, they have some they have some tailgating stuff outside, but mostly it's all inside. So mostly all inside. The tables are free, admissions free, and they usually sell out of that. Well, when I say sell out, well, it's from, it, from it, nine a.m. to three, and normally it's nine a.m. to noon. Yeah, it's a pretty short one, but they give away a lot of good good prizes. I won a autopilot drone there a couple of years back. Bruce, uh, Bruce is saying in the chat room, the easiest way to do those ball bearings, put them all in a big glass uh, jar, fill it with grease, <clears throat> and take your hand and just uh, swirl them all around, man. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Oh, man. Yeah. But yeah, if you open it wrong or you slip, you have ball bearings everywhere. And I think it's a, it, it's a different number. You get to the, on the top and the bottom. I think one's like I don't know fifty seven, or the bottom one's fifty six, or something like that. I don't think it makes a lot of difference. I think you could probably get by losing one or two of those balls. <laughs> now you don't want to come short because then you know it's just not going to last. Yeah. But yeah, I've had to. I've the both of the rotators I got I had to redo the ball bearings and stuff on. Because I mean they were they were sitting up for years and years and the grease just dried out and caked. Yeah. Oh, but, well, uh, I've got the ladder out there. The ladder's been out there for over a month up against the house. Uh I've got I built me a little tripod and I put the satellite antennas on a uh on a little tripod mount, on I've got a flat roof above my back porch. That was a great place to uh, to put those antennas. So it's not dangerous or hard to get to. It's just I'm lazy, you know, to go out there and take them down. Well, see, I got to fix the 40 meter wire on my cobweb. It got broke, and it's just too cold to even think about going outside and getting on the roof. Yeah, I mean, it was what. You know, thirty-five today. I don't know. It's thirty-two. Been, I when went I left out. It was. It felt morning. pretty. It felt pretty good out. Uh, it was nice this evening, but this morning it it was in the thirties most of the day, at least mm -hmm. from according to my phone. And that's that's not go outside and climb on the roof 
you know, restringing a cobweb. All right, like let weather. me get a, let me get a quick announcement in here. <clears throat> we were about four minutes away from the end of the after the show show. We're in the after the show show. This is a uh, this is the second show after our ham radio show called uh, Amateur Radio Roundtable. And I want to thank everybody out there listening on WBCQ 7490 kilohertz. Send us an email to tom at w5kub.com. We'd love to hear from you. Join us live on our video broadcast on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Central Time. Just go to w5kub.com. And we thank everybody for joining us tonight. And everybody in the chat room, thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right. <laughs> So, I haven't had lunch today, so I'm thinking about oh, getting some. One more to eat. thing. What do you This is what they gave out oh, yeah. at the, uh, the Ham Fest for forum presenters. It's a uh, laser cut uh, wood uh, cell phone stand. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, works out real nice. All right. Hey, well, Tom, cool. I'm going to share my screen for a second. All right. Go right ahead. Uh, you have to enable it. Oh, okay. Let me do an enable here. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. It's, um, here we go. We'll take a second here. Yep. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. You see that spike in the pressure? No, no. Right, right now, all I'm seeing is your uh, internet login and password. Oh. <laughs> no, it hadn't come up yet. Um, I see you clicked on a file, but I, the file has not come up. Did it come up there? Yeah. The PNG? It's, um, it says you are screen sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like locked. Oh. It's, it's what? Oh, also, there. Also seeing is GPSL 2021 and a yeah. bunch of files. Let me try this a little bit differently then. All right, we see the circle. Uh, do you have two monitors? Yes. Um, there. Yeah, I think you're sharing the wrong screen. Okay, let me stop share here. Let me try this again. Well, you know what? You know what? That stays up. When she clicks on it, that stays up. So, yeah, I think with, with uh, Zoom, you had to tell it what maybe, screen. Uh, or maybe the desktop. You should share the whole desktop. Yeah. Yeah, this second here. I'll bring it up this way. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Slow internet. I'm, I was uh, spoiled. Up in Ohio, I had very high-speed internet. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let me try that again. Well, I think it's you're sure. Hanging but, weirdly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to come. That came up. There you up. go. It came up. All right, let me get this All right. off the picture here. So do you see that peak yep. on the right there? There's a little blip, a yep. very sharp blip on the highest peak there. Yep. That's the pressure wave from the Tonga explosion as seen in Tampa, Florida, on a weather station in uh, on APRS. Wow. Mm. And that yeah. took 10 hours. The explosion happened on January 15th at 4.15 
UTC, and it took 10 hours to get to Florida. Hmm. That was about a four millibar spike. Yeah. And in Australia, it was huge. It was like a 20 millibar spike. Wow. But uh, that's uh, like 8,000 miles away. <laughs> yeah. So I thought I'd show you that. That is really that is, cool. That is cool. <laughs> Never would have thought about that. All right, and guys. I do a whole bunch of them. All right, guys. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to go get something to eat. Take it easy. Good night to y'all. This is my Friday. Oh. We'll see you next week. See you next week. All right. Bye. Send me through to everybody. Bye. All right. <clears throat> Good night. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us tonight. See you next week.